Um, hopefully my phone won't go off. We are expecting thunderstorms today because it's hot. <laughs> it's very <laughs> hot. And, uh, mm -hmm. We did have record heat like this back in the late 40s. That was the last time we were this hot during this time of year. Right. Yeah. And then we're just hot right now. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Enough complaining about the weather. Okay. Let's talk about the tinfoil hat theory. Woo, tinfoil hat time, folks. Tinfoil hat time. Yay. Every, mm -hmm. Everyone go out and get, make your tinfoil hat now. All right. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Unearthly Upstate. I am Mari. I am Matthew. And today we're going to talk about, is it a story? Is it true? Is it just a conspiracy theory? We're not sure. If or is it a hoax drummed up to make tourist money? Could be that too. Mm -hmm. um, but we are going to talk about the Indian Lake Project. Let me just put it in a nutshell. Indian Lake Project, supposedly... Uh, this one man stumbled upon proof that there were experiments done on children in the Indian Lake area of the Anirondacks mm -hmm. during the 40s and 50s, maybe even up to the 60s. And the question is, is it real? Or was this just a damn good story and people ran with it? Since there is no physical evidence other than what the, the contents of this box. Yeah. That's it. That's all we really have to go on. Well, if you go up to Indian Lake itself, mm -hmm. you won't find any remnants, not even as much as a sign or any sort of structures left. But is that what the government wants us to believe? Remember, there are, there are, a, lot every... of there are a lot of missile silos in the Anirondacks, too. Remember? And there's remnants of it. Mm -hmm. There's always remnants of it somewhere. True. True. Somewhere, something said, you know, you know, stamp with made in the USA, no buildings whatsoever, no no remnants. Okay, now you talk about the buildings, but nobody has any idea what we're talking about. So i got to start mm -hmm. at the beginning, or at least the beginning where most people were introduced to this. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go back to Sunday, October 2nd, 2005. This is a blog on Blogger. Mm -hmm. The writer is John T., or just John, I'm sorry. It's called the Indian Lake Project, and this is the first post, okay? And I'm going to read it in its entirety because it's a, it's a short post, all right? So it says, On July 9th, 1997, my uncle was hiking in a wooded area around Indian Lake, New York. He tripped on what he thought was a tree root sticking slightly above the ground. When he looked back, he noticed a corner of this box above ground. The fact that he was far from any marked path or road and was an area that few, if any, usually hike sparked his curiosity. The box was sticking up by only two to three inches, and by the look of the ground around the box, he figured it had been there quite a while. With only sticks to dig with, it took him a while to pry it from the ground. The three shapes on top of the box, an upside-down triangle and two circles, were only apparent after it was later cleaned up. The box had no lock on it and was easily opened. Inside the box, my uncle found 21 water-damaged photos, three 8mm home movie reels, and various documents. Most of the photos are of children, which led my uncle to fear the worst, that he had stumbled upon evidence of a crime involving children, that his blood ran cold when he began reading the documents also found in the box. He indeed stumbled upon a crime involving children, but instead of some child molester, it seemed that these children were all parts of some United States government experimentation, and those experiments were known as the ILP, or the Indian Lake Project. In 2002, my uncle died, and the box was given to me shortly before he passed away. He was afraid of the contents of the box, and he wished he'd never found it. I feel it is my obligation to share its contents with the truth behind what had been buried for 50 years. So there we have the beginnings of this. Okay, my first problem with it is the box itself. Okay. There's no way you'd be able to preserve old photographs, 
certainly not eight millimeter film mm -hmm. from what was it again? He said 50 years, so that was 2005, so 1950s. 1950s? Yeah. 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 There's no way. Yeah. Well, you know, and I'm looking at the box here, which is, the website is still up. Uh, just look at the Indian Lake Project on Blogger. And the picture of the box, it it's not even an ammo box. It's a metal box. Now, if it had been an ammo box, I think I would be more believable. Right, exactly. Okay, because those are designed to mm -hmm, seal. Mm -hmm. This is just a metal box. And there's really no seal on everything, so I agree with you. At this point, you know, you're, you should be going, how did these papers, and even even at the bad condition they were, that 8 millimeter would be gone. Exactly. It would be gone. All right. It would be. It would be completely deteriorated. So in this box, this man finds some photos. And I hate to say it, but I think you guys can already hear our bias. We're discussing this. <laughs> right. um, but, yeah, these, these are some great photos. I don't think these are actually photos photoshopped i they might be to some extent i'm looking at some of these photos i'm thinking if these well let me hold off on what i think later i don't want a couple uh, of them look like family photos yeah so and a couple look modern yeah and modern black and white photographs that have been touched up yeah to make look as if they were old all right, you can tell our bias is already here. I was really hoping we could do this with our bias showing, but our bias is showing. I mean, oh my gosh. Oh, but we'd like... Well, that's the vexing thing about yeah. things the, like this, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you can look through the photos. Like, this one, I think, is actually from a movie, and something got added to it. But, you know, that's my opinion. That's my mm -hmm. opinion. People can argue with me on this. But anyway, you go through the entire blog, and like I said, I'm scrolling through it right now. And he's got photographs... He's figuring out what's on the pages, mm -hmm. and it is describing these experimentations being done on children. Now, here's the thing. He mentions a few things in here, like Project Artichoke and Project, what was the other one, Bluebeard. Okay. Mm. Now, here's the thing. Those, are, those were legit ones. Actually, Project Artichoke was the main project, and I'm getting this from Wikipedia, Project Artichoke was a central intelligence agency project that researched interrogation methods. So as you he's writing this blog, he is citing actual covert experimentation, I don't want to see what, projects mm -hmm. that were done by the CIA, you know, the famous is MKUltra. But he, he is talking mm. about other ones that are done. Now, the Artichoke was a mind control program that gathered information through Intelligence Division of the Army, Navy, Air Force, and FBI. In addition, the scope of the project was outlined in a memo dated January 1952 that asked, Can we control an individual to the point where he would do our bidding against his will, even against the fundamental laws of nature, such as self-preservation? Mm. So, yeah, this... This trying is, to come up with a more perfect killing machine. Uh, or... How can, how can we override people's natural instinct to run away from a dangerous situation? Or it could be as simple as um, you get somebody who <clears throat> refuses to tell you any information because, let's say, they're a fanatic. Hmm. Okay, let's look at it, this argument. To break their programming. To break the programming. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it could be used that way as well. But you, like you said, too, it could, mm -hmm. you know, we could go against their moral judgments and make them do stuff against their moral judgments as well. Right. But that was the extent of it. There is historical truth behind the um, human experimentation. And then, but the Indian Lake Project is the first one we hear about, supposedly, where they were experimenting on children. And that's mainly the argument about this. Um, he does give some background on artichoke and M MK Ultra, <clears throat> and how it might be related to this. Talks over about these pictures that he finds in there. And then he does go up to Indian Lake and does take some photos. Now here's the thing. He's got some photos of this structure in Indian Lake. I think I have seen the structure on some other tourist and hiking sites. I don't think it's up near Indian Lake. These pictures he supposedly found at Indian Lake. It's, uh, how to describe this, very tall archways. It almost looks like an aqueduct type thing, but it's in a box shape. Is that a fair description? 
Like I said, you could just yeah. check out his web page if you're having hard his blog or if you're having a hard time picturing these. But I swear I've seen them somewhere else, but not Indian Lake. Probably somewhere else in the Adirondacks, or I'm thinking maybe the Catskills. Actually, there are structures like this. You can take hikes out in the Catskills and Adirondacks and come upon um, hotels that were, you know, hotels and resorts that have been left to ruin, um, old industrial factories and that. And I think that's what this might be, actually, is part of an old industrial site. These are a pre-National yeah. Park establishment structures. Or state where, park, sorry. Yeah, state, sorry, <laughs> state park, yes. Yeah. yeah. These are pre-state park establishment structures where people had their private property there, their mm-hmm. businesses. There are old roads out there, yep. paved and unpaved, and they're still out there. Yes. And you can still explore them, which is an interesting part about the Adirondacks. Yeah. What is the next thing about this place? That's... Well, he talks about he found these structures, mm-hmm. and then later on, somebody posts to him. This woman gets in contact with him by email. They start a conversation together, but he gets kind of scared off on her because she says, well, she knows about it because she worked there or knows somebody worked there. But he starts sensing that perhaps her involvement with him isn't curiosity, isn't, you know, isn't altruistic. And he stops posting for a bit and then he comes back. Mm-hmm. And at this time, there's a better breakdown than I'm doing right now. On uh, You can watch that chapter on YouTube. Mike does a wonderful breakdown of this story. There's a lot of Twitter stuff going on. I do not have the guy's Twitter up. Mm-hmm. Explain some stuff in Twitter. And he does start sounding a little paranoid about this time, too. Right. Mm-hmm. He breaks off contact with this person who supposedly has firsthand knowledge. who right. worked there. Now, wouldn't you jump on that? Well, he does, but then he, you know, the, through the correspondence, he says he doesn't feel like this person's being alt- altruistic. He feels like they have an ulterior motive for contacting him. Oh, okay. And let me give you an example. This is from um, his post in January 28th, 2008. It's been a while since I, my last post, and although I do not have anything new, I want to, at this time, I want to post just a quick comment. In the past, I have become a victim when I opened myself up to those who have emailed me. Certainly not all of you have an agenda, but if you read this blog, there have been times when I was duped into believing or researching various things that have gotten me off the path and slowed me down. Most of you show support or offer your help, which is wonderful, but please understand the likelihood I will not respond to your emails directly. Also, as a side note, my inbox is constantly full. 90% of it is spam. Waiting through it can be a daunting task, so I do not check my email daily or even weekly basis. I do, don't want to discourage you from emailing me just because I do read and appreciate it all. I just want to let you know that I will rarely email you back. He's answering some questions he gets, like, I live in the area, how can I help? Several emails are coming like this, and my answer is thank you, but no. Oftentimes, I don't want to be involved with this. And after the fiasco with Mary, the, the woman I was talking about, mm-hmm. all I can say is for certain I never let that happen again. Are you still being followed or watched? Not that I have noticed. Things seem to be normal, but there's no way to be certain. Will you ever go back in the woods? No comment. <laughs> okay. Okay, but some of those questions sound staged. Yeah, well, we're, but, we're not going to go into that right now. <laughs> okay. All right, all, right. all right, so this continues on until uh, February 25th, 2013, and he just says, please follow Indian Lake Project and stay con- uh, on Twitter and stay connected to the latest information. And that's the last post he has on the blog. Now, through this all, he was given a lot of information. Mm-hmm. You know, talks about the experimentation on the people, connecting it to the CIA's projects. What was, I mean, for an example, okay, they, you can find examples of these CIA projects. Some of them very clandestine dangerous and unethical and some of them just plain stupid like audio cat like the staring at goats type stuff like audio cat yeah <laughs> i have to explain what audio cat is <laughs> please do cat lovers i'm a cat lover you might like want to hear this but i'm going to assure you the cat was fine <laughs> <laughs> okay they thought it would be a great idea to use a cat Bug a cat. Get a microphone in a cat's head 
and set it loose on the Russian consulate in, I forget if it was Washington, D.C. or New York City. So there would be a straight cat wandering around the complex mm. recording things. And they actually did surgery on this cat to put the microphone in. Now, why it was a failure? We have two different stories. One is the cat was hit by a bus immediately upon release. <laughs> oh, but we've been reassured, no, the cat's fine. It's just when they ran some tests, it wasn't giving them the result they wanted, so they removed the microphone and everything from the cat, mm-hmm. and the cat went and lived a happy life is the other result. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's actually a third result which said, no, it was successful. The cat did record some things. Then they took the microphone out, and it lived a long, happy life. So. <laughs> There's two of them where the cat survived. There's one where the cat immediately died, which is, you know... Because getting Gene Hackman to live inside the walls was too expensive. Oh, my God. That is an obscure, <laughs> obscure reference. Nobody's listening. <laughs> Those are, what's the name of that movie again? The Conversation. The Conversation. Watch The Conversation. And then if you have a chance, watch the show Spaced with Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. They actually do a callback to that movie, which is an obscure movie, and we had seen that movie, and they do a callback to the movie, and it's like, like, ten people are going to get this, but they still threw it in mm-hmm. there. <laughs> because they're fans of the movie. Because they're fans of the movie. It's a great movie about spying. Starring Gene Hackman and Harrison Ford. Mm-hmm. Okay, back to this. Hmm. So, like we said, the CIA did a lot of weird things. and They, they weren't the only government. Talk about animal experimentation. There's that... Wonderful one were the Nazis or the Russians? Who trained the dogs? It was the communists. It was the communists trained dogs to run to run bombs underneath tanks. Explain the problem with that. They only trained them using Russian tanks. <laughs> so when they were in the field and they were supposed to run the bombs under the Nazi tanks, they ran them under the tanks they were familiar with and blew up the Russian tanks. There was also Bed, the Bed. Go away. <laughs> There was also the bat experiment. That was the American one. Yeah, they, they were going to fly the bats, bats over to J- Japan. Ja- the, to the Japanese mainland. To go roost in the emperor's belfry. The, the bats were going to carry little incineraries. Yep. <laughs> when they went into the buildings, to daylight, they were supposed to burn the buildings down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Never worked. Why? Because it burned the building down on the Air Force. <laughs> Proving that it would have worked. Incendiary bats would work because most of the housing, yeah, because this this was an anti civilian weapon, yes, yes, that they would have unleashed on them because all the houses were made of wood, yeah, there there was, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, okay, I agree, it would have worked, but the bats proved you had no control over where the bats went, absolutely. Now, obviously, now, like the thing we're talking about with the the, the cat and the bat and the bomb and the dogs. All that can be done through drones. So think Definitely. of all the animals that have that will never be militarily experimented on weaponized. ever again because we have drones now. Don't, okay. Don't need weaponized, you know, uh, animals anymore. No. So, oh, oh. Okay. But yeah, it goes to show you what a desperate nation would turn to. Yeah. For a solution to a, the problem of you know, overwhelming odds in facing an enemy. Okay, circling it back to Indian Lake. Right. Things like that mm-hmm. did exist. Give, give credence to a theory like Indian Lake, MK Ultra, mm-hmm. the the Tuskegee syphilis oh, studies. That's a horrible one. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the most nefarious ones. Yes. And they existed. Yes. And that's what makes it so difficult <laughs> to separate <laughs> to the facts it, from the fiction. It, yes. To separate the facts from the fiction when it comes to something like Indian Lake. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, here's uh, other thing is, okay, the blog ends in 2013. He's not very active on Twitter after that. It mm-hmm. just kind of fizzles out. And then all of a sudden, in 2019, people are posting about this again. Uh-huh. And that's due to, we mentioned one, I just mentioned one, that chapter hosted by Mike. Wonderful YouTube channel, I suggest you guys. I, free plug, I know. We don't free have, plug. We don't um, have permission, he, necessarily. He wasn't the first one, but he was, I think, the first one I saw that just did a... Um, a overview of it. Uh-huh. There were a few others, and we will have them listed in our notes. But this was all about 2019. It was like it was rediscovered by people on the internet. Mm. The thing is, you had a lot of people who were like, "Hey, this is a great story. Mm. This is a wonderful story. This is good. This this is you know this has got some intrigue to it. 
this, oh, you know, this is a good story. And then you had others like, I knew it. That that really happened. That really. Yep. So what was it? Was this a good story with this? Or is it really what happened? Well, when you bring together mm-hmm. government experimental conspiracies and children. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The imagination runs wild. Mm-hmm. And how did they acquire the kids is my question, first of all. I don't well, think that's ever addressed. I don't think that is. I think it should be. Because I don't, it's never addressed in the original those, blog. Looking at it cold-heartedly, those are the basic materials you need for your Oh, yeah. Well, they'd have to acquire the children. They would have to have infrastructure to mm-hmm. support even a small base up there. Yeah. And, yeah, those buildings and, like, the ones... The explorer found, would that mm-hmm. have supported enough? Let's see, you need doctors, you need soldiers to protect them, you need you, you need, need to, a way to feed them, you need mm-hmm. pe- people managing that place, you need people keeping the place up and running, you yeah. need a cleaning staff. So you're talking, this can't be just a sm- two small little homes like that guy. You, you need to run an extension cord from the nearest power facility right. off to your your lab, you know, that's right. going to, yeah, where all these wires running to that's going to take a tremendous amount of power one of my previous it. employers which i'm mm-hmm. i'm going to be very vague about because I, I don't talk about it for various reasons not because it was a bad employment situation there was just various reasons i don't talk about it much but mm-hmm. it was a perfect example how people think oh well it'll just take a few people to run that mm-hmm. where i was working it was a good a couple hundred people just needed to keep that place running bare minimums bare minimums and I worked on the outside of it, mm-hmm. but the inside was its own little city. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm trying to be vague. I'm sorry, folks. I really don't want to. But no. Yeah. <clears throat> but my point the is, point is yeah. my point is, it's not just going to be a couple of people experimenting on these children in this house somewhere. Right. Nice. There is a lot of support staff. I, I was in the office outside of this, but I was still part of it. You know. People living there. You're going yeah. to have to see to the needs of those children. Wait, well, okay, just to see you know, to the needs of the people. You're going to need doc- mm-hmm. the children. You're going to need doctors. Mm-hmm. You're going to need teachers. Right. You're going to need people to feed everybody. Right. Okay, you need a janitor staff to keep the place clean. Mm-hmm. You probably, because it's high security, you're going to need soldiers there. Too to many people who are going to know all the secrets about this place. Right. And yes, the Anirondacks is huge. And yes, you can literally come upon these old ruins. I mean, there's some towns up there that are mm. totally ghost town, and you can go in there and explore and stuff. Yeah. So that really fits in as well. Is that there, yes, there are vast areas and where a complex like this could stay. Mm. My problem is he just finds a couple structures, and which could be anything. Which could be anything. And I'm thinking, okay, this is from the 50s. The only way. They could have totally destroyed it. It was like, burn it down. But that would have made news somewhere. Yeah. Because that would have caused a fire. And there are fire towers all over the Adirondacks. They would have reported an enormous fire in that area of the Adirondacks. People go to the fire towers Uh to view the Adirondacks. Somebody would have seen it if they burned it down. Absolutely. So here's the thing. How do you cover it up? Well, they couldn't do it that way. That would cost too much. And the enormous amount. It's forgetting the enormous amount of traffic. In and out. Yeah, the Indian Lake is not... Okay, like I said, the Anirondacks are secluded enough. There's a vast tracts of wilderness up there. Mm-hmm. But, like, we've been studying doing some Anirondack hikes maybe next year. We're working up to it, folks, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, two years ago, I wouldn't even thought about doing a mile hike on a flat right, boardwalk, exactly. and now we did, we, you know, we've been doing four and five miles recently. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're working up to the Anirondacks. I'm looking at some of the trails, and they will. People review the trails, and they will say these trails are very busy. So even if you are like going up to Mount Marcy, mm-hmm. and it's a popular day that day, you might not be the only person on the trail. Mm-hmm. You probably run into people constantly. So there are parts of the Anirondacks where it's busy, even though you're out in the middle of nowhere. And there's parts of the Anirondacks where you could be on the trail for hours and not see a single soul. Absolutely. You know, so yes. it, it would depend on the tourist destinations, really. Okay, so yeah. that's on the con side. Right. Okay, here's something on the pro-conspiracy side. Okay. The facility is underground. That's a possibility. Like I keep mm-hmm. mentioning, there are missile silos in the Anirondacks. Yes. Mm-hmm. So underground, yes, very good possibility. I will 
I will concede that one. So yes. they have the technology. Yes. To build, and not a vast underground complex, okay. but a sufficient underground complex where they could conduct their experiments on these children without the risk of prying eyes. Here's my uh, wrench in the works there. Mm -hmm. Let's go out to Area 51. (laughs) Okay. You got the people work at Area 51. Everyone knows they come to work on an airplane outside of Las Vegas. Absolutely. So where were these people coming in from? Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, if you're going to make a big complex, are you going to have the people living there or are you going to have to ship them in? Absolutely, yeah. And that you get, goes back to what I said about the enormous amount of traffic. Right. And then you got the small town who's used to big traffic during the summer months uh-huh. because, you know, hiking and outdoorsy stuff. And, you know, it's the Adirondacks. A lot of people like going up there. Beautiful country. But the winter, yes, you do still have tourists. You got snowmobilers. You got snowshoers. You've got, you still have people who enjoy coming up there. You got skiers and whatever. But that, it's not as busy. So I think somebody in a small town would go, hey, we keep seeing these same people coming through once a week, and they leave once a week. Mm-hmm. It would start raising eyebrows. And that's kind of like how it got noticed, people flying into Area 51. It was like, yeah. this plane always leaves at this time, it always comes back at this time. It's the same people embarking point. and disembarking. No matter how clandestine they try to be about yeah. the traffic in and out, somebody's going to notice. Right. And then also comparing this to Area 51... Where are the armed guards? Where are the white Broncos? Or the equivalent. Or the equivalent. Maybe yeah, it, right. it would have been um, camouflage jeeps in the 50s mm-hmm. or yeah, whatever. it would have been. Okay. It would have been army green. Actually, it probably been one of those six wheel of ducks. I don't think about it. You know what I'm talking about? Absolutely. Okay. Mm-hmm. Listeners, if you don't know what I'm looking <laughs> it's a all-terrain vehicle. It's got six wheels. Ducks is not the right term. The ducks is that other aquatic boat car thingy that they use in a lot of tourist places but these are smaller i think of the dells they run those are the ducks little yeah. uh, little rides that you can take yeah. on, on, on an old-fashioned duck like yeah. that that's been repainted yeah you know this is old the, army well, surplus those, those are those are big though you can fit mm-hmm. like 40 50 people on the one i'm thinking was it's like a, maybe a four or, or three seater absolutely yeah, and it's got ones. yeah mm-hmm. and it can float i have a brother who lives in alaska he mm-hmm. owns one because it's the best thing to take out when he goes hunting moose yeah. You, you know, you take that out of your quad runner. Mm-hmm. So, okay, they probably have been using something like that up there, that little six-wheeler. Mm-hmm. Where are the reports of, why are there a lot of six-wheelers up in that one mountain? You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, absolutely. What's, what's the locals would have been curious about it, you know. There would have been some kind of activity, even if you had an underground facility. Yes. For Indian Lake. Mm-hmm. The, yeah, that traffic, Yeah. you know, so, would have been noticed. But... Maybe it was noticed, because there is a video on YouTube about some people who go investigate it. Oh, really? Oh, yes. And they do ask around. (laughs) And they do... (laughs) You're laughing because you saw it. (laughs) They do ask around. And they do go to... I don't know if he was the mayor or he was the head of the Common Council. He was some government head there. And his secretary was being very nice. Oh, yeah, I've heard about the Indian Lake Project, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, and she's starting to give them these filmmakers, Blair, very Blair Witch type, by the way, you know, information about it. All of a sudden, her boss comes out and says, oh, I need you to file these right away. And he, like, ends the interview and, you know, they try to get some information on him. He slams the door on it. And they Check it out. Judge for yourself. They, they talk to some guys in the bar. They find this one guy at a a store? I'm not sure what type of store it was. A random convenience store. And they start mentioning Indian Lake Project. Very shifty eyes, that man. Very shifty eyes. They and then he, he obviously does a double take from one side to the other. And he says, yeah. oh, well, what you know about that? Yeah. He said, <laughs> but, the, yeah. But, but this found footage ends when something happens to them when they're out investigating. Oh, my God. You know. You, you thought the television networks were full of bad actors. This is was awful. Oh, and heck. it was released on, because this will give you a clue on why we don't think this is legit. Okay, I've actually loaded up the video here. Stop, I don't want to play. We don't have uh, rights to it. I just want to give you the date. October 27th, 2015, on the Adirondack Experience website. Mm-hmm. Sometime in the fall of 2015, three amateur filmmakers seemed to disappear in the woods near Indian Lake, New York, while shooting a documentary on the Indian Lake Project. This footage was the only thing that was found. Dun, dun, dun. 
Watch it for yourself. And then later on it's revealed that yeah. the people in the yeah. video... Okay, and I know this is going to spoil it for you. Yeah. But it turns out, don't they work for, like, the Chamber of Commerce yes. up there? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so... So it's a big... Okay, uh, so tourist promotion. I am not city. sure. Okay, I, this is my theory. Who it is? The guy who originally wrote the story, mm-hmm. blogger, wrote it as a story. There was a lot of experimental stories coming out that time. We uh-huh. have uh, Crystal Cove, I believe it was called, came out at that point. If people are not familiar that with that, that rings a bell. Yeah, it was so. written like it was a copy of a message board. Oh, yeah. In which these these adults are talking mm-hmm. about this creepy kid show they used to watch, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it was all written. It's actually a work of fiction. People now believe it's legit because fans of that story have actually created Crystal Crow videos. I think it even got made into a TV show on the Sci Fi Channel. Mm-hmm. But it all started from this guy writing this fictional story as if you're reading post on this message board mm-hmm. it's very good if you ever read the original it's really good it draws you in the picture i yeah oh, sorry to interrupt yeah uh but that's what i think was the original blogger's intent he wanted to tell a story that mm-hmm. went over a period of time and some people call them agrs or you know uh, augmented reality games oh, now right 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 this was pre augmented reality game this was just people experimenting with it. i know we were thinking about experimenting with a, a similar type format well, with one of my older if stories i can give it a self yeah. plug sure right, right now yeah. as far as arg goes uh-huh. i've recently developed a, a channel on youtube mm-hmm. in which i've taken my fallout character, Dr. Nelson Traveler, mm-hmm. made him into that sort of thing. He's, yeah. It's just a character, but yeah. it follows his history. And I put some audio videos up there right now Good. of some uh, radio yeah. fragments that he captured <laughs> off of his ham radio mm-hmm. of BBC announcements, both before and after right. the war, giving his own experience and all that. But I'm, it's in the development stage right now. Right. I'm putting new things of it up in and you know that video that I made uh, up in the hills on mm-hmm. a recent hike? The video I took with my cell phone camera oh, and the, bin- the binoculars. Yeah. And I put that up on Dr. Nielsen Traveler's channel mm-hmm. as a periscope view, mm-hmm. looking up from his Corvega lab, mm-hmm. where he was sealed into a cryogenic pod. This is his first view of the world before okay. he ventures out. So and- yours is kind of a it's an <laughs> ARG fan fiction of Fallout. Yes. Okay, <laughs> cool. Yeah, so, <laughs> but it's self just, plug. But it's just a different way of telling the story. And, and mm-hmm. there was a lot of experimental ones in there. I remember a Twitter story that somebody was telling at around that time. And it was only done in 140 characters. I got involved with one myself around that particular time. Uh, mm-hmm. It was about a zombie attack in England. We all were assigned characters. It was like kind of like role-playing, mm-hmm. but you had to... You had to promote the story as well. It was very, it was really fun, especially for a creative writer. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what the original blog was. But years after this blog ends, finding this blog, wondering if it's real, calling up people in Indian Lake, coming to Indian Lake, asking about it. So I think the Chamber of Commerce went, oh, let's use this. Mm -hmm. And they took it and ran with it and made that video. (laughs) Right. The reason I'm laughing is there are some good actors in it. Don't get me wrong. They got some good actors, but they got some horrible ones. Not really bad, obvious ones. But it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch. Sure. I think the whole thing, yes, it is a story. Yes, I know our bias mm-hmm. showed it. We can't say this legitimately was real. Well, for one reason, we haven't gone to Indian Lake ourselves yet to look. Absolutely. That's on our our list for next year. Who knows? We might disappear. <laughs> we'll, we'll videotape it. <laughs> We'll let you guys we'll, know. We'll make sure to drop one of our cell phones for someone to find. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's Indian Lake Project. I mean, mm-hmm. I think it was a very Short good story. Sweet. I think it was a very good story. I yeah. think it's an intriguing story. I highly recommend you go down that rabbit hole and look oh, into sure. it. Read the blog. If you can find the guy's Twitter feed, read the Twitter feed. I don't go on Twitter. so yeah. If you want to go check out Indian Lake yourself, go ahead. There's great hiking trails up there, I'm pretty sure. I mean, it's beautiful up there. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah, you, you just pick anywhere in the Anirondacks. It's mm-hmm. beautiful. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. I was about yeah. to say yeah. And like I said, there were the missile base, the missile silos up there. Mm-hmm. There, there are legitimate legit things up there that I think urban explorers would be just jonesing at exploring. I mean, the one thing I'm thinking of, there's one in the Catskills, which is an old resort. 
mm-hmm. that's been left to fall apart. And people go out there all the time and look at it. And that mm-hmm. one has actually been left for people to explore. They've it's take... almost as if people have worked the satellite view on the fo- on the photographs uh, online. Yeah. And we're able to, to pick right. out where these places well, are. See, that's and go the other them. thing. Wouldn't there be, you know, well, I know Google does sometimes mm-hmm. blackout stuff mm-hmm. when they're asked to. It would be kind of obvious up there. I mean, you'd start cutting and pasting the, the trees up there, and somebody go, well, they don't match the typography or something. They, they, somebody these, would catch that. Well, these kinds of trees yeah. don't grow here. Right, Or exactly. something like that. But then again, you know, we're talking about a facility that's been abandoned, what, Probably at least 30 years, 30 years yeah, according to the story, so, yeah. Okay, so the Indian Lake Project itself didn't last very long. If, yeah, well, we know. If it was. If it was. And <laughs> so it would be very overgrown. Right. It, and it would but there go, would still okay. be some kind of structure. Hypothetically, left. if it was a project that was, like, say, canceled in the 60s and the mm-hmm. government kind of forgot about it, cut the funding and everything, let everything just overgrow and d- decay and whatever, would they even worry about Google accidentally? Use it. Probably not. Exactly. Not at all. It's not yeah. a. It's not a working base. So, yeah, if know. it was gutted after the project yeah. was scrapped, if it, because yeah. they need the equipment, right? Can't let that stuff go to waste, right? Even in the old silos where they've taken out all the, uh-huh. the equipment and everything, because a lot of that stuff is still classified. Yeah. Yeah, there wouldn't be any of that stuff left in this buried box, and oh, I want to circle it back around to the, that film. Okay. Why don't we see any footage from the film that he discovered in the box? Yeah. That's missing. That's missing, the three, eight, hey, three eight a, millimeters. Yeah. That'd be an amusing project for you listeners to embark upon, I suppose. Come up with somebody I'm, spontaneously. You know, I'm surprised somebody eight, hasn't come up what's with... What's on the eight millimeter film? Yeah, what's on the eight millimeter film? That, that's an interesting question. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, don't, I haven't heard any answers to that one at all. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's a good one. All righty. So I think we're going to end it here. It's All getting right. very hot in this room. <laughs> All right. And Thank you for listening to our Gaslit Podcast. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to Unearthly Upstate. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Patreon, and our webpage. We are also on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Sprecher, Stitcher, Podbean, Google Podcast, and CastBox. Please like, share, and view on your favorite platform. Unearthly Upstate is an Animator Liar production. The show is produced by Mari and Matt Manette, with purring provided by Honey and Lloyd. Research and writing by Mari Manette. Music is by Kevin McCloud, licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Unless otherwise stated in the episode, the places mentioned in the broadcast are not paid or contact us for any type of promotion. Please check out our webpage for credit and sources for the episode. Thank you.